Hey YouTube, it's POD7 here once again. Uh, if you were paying attention last episode, then you know that that makes no sense because I just sat there for five seconds waiting for the recorder thing to go to the next clip. Uh, but anyway, um, I decided in that four or five second window that um, we shouldn't talk about sports. We should focus on FTL and sci-fi and uh, the big announcement I made, which would be two episodes ago for you. <laughs> Um, actually got permission from EA uh, to put these videos up, and uh, that felt really important to me, considering I monetize my videos, and it just didn't feel right just going ahead without telling them, because I'll potentially be making money off of something they own. <laughs> And, uh, I got really excited when, uh, when they told me, or when I got the email back, and, uh, six, six out of seven people I told, I uh, could not have cared less. <laughs> um, it was pretty demoralizing, um, but my brother, when I told him, he was super excited, and... For some reason, that took me from negative 10 on the moral, the morale scale and set me up to about 5. So I'm pretty excited about doing the series again. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. I guess I care more about what other people think than I previously thought. Um, especially for people I've never met. <laughs> and have talked to like three times in voice chat um not to demean our friendships or anything but I don't know <laughs> I guess that's my way of saying I'm madly in love with you guys <laughs> oh man uh, <laughs> um this may go up well it's it should go up before Christmas but uh I was going to be meeting Slip from the New Legacy Inc. guys. Uh, links to their channels will be down in the description, I hope, if I remember. Um, I was going to meet him and future Mrs. Slip, who were coming back from holiday stuff. But uh, then the weather decided to be a huge douche and drop snow. <laughs> or at least attempt to. Um, I didn't want to seem like a huge jerk and tell them that what they think snow is in Kansas would be like throwing a drop in the ocean. <laughs> I mean, they closed school around... When I was in school, they would close for a snow day with two inches of snow on the ground. So... Um... <laughs> It re I, I highly doubt it will be that big of a deal, but again, didn't want to be a douche, and they're probably tired from doing holiday stuff anyway, and need to get their rest before they go back to work, so I just told them I'd catch them next time. <laughs> I hope we can. I, for I already forgot what day they said they'd probably be able to come up and visit. Ugh. And that ties into what I was talking about last episode with plans. <laughs> uh, I don't remember stuff like that now because I've conditioned myself to not care. Because plans always fall through whenever I make them. So, uh, <laughs> I just completely forget stuff like that. Um, which can really, really screw things up sometimes. <laughs> Uh, but enough about that. We are in a nebula at the moment, fighting more slugs. I told you we'd be fighting a ton of slugs in this run through. Um, trying to think about. Let's talk about some Mass Effect, shall we? Um, I think I said in my Minecraft 
uh, video series that I had started doing route planning, and I am completely done with Mass Effect. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> that took forever. Um, Mass Effect 3 is actually the easiest one to do because it's so linear, um, and there's not really that many side missions, quote-unquote, to do that are, like, cool to go on. I mean, they're still fun, but... Uh, like, in Mass Effect 1, you would get a side quest, and you'd have to find out uh, what uh, system it's in, and then, or no, what, like, little nebula thing it's, it's in, and then you'd have to find uh, which star it's by, and then you'd have to find which planet <laughs> it is, and then in some cases you'd have to land on the planet and drive around looking for it, but on... Mass Effect 3, it's just a little flag that pops up and you travel there and usually it's just fighting a bunch of Cerberus guys <laughs> on a uh, in a lab or something. So, I mean, there's a couple side missions that are pretty decent, um, but that is a long way off. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Mass Effect 1... I have down to, I want to say, if I, if I was skipping through all the text, hey, it's raining outside, if I was skipping through all the text and cutscenes, I could do it in about 10 to 12 hours. Uh, since I'm, for the, for, in a, for the goal of the series, which is to be more like a DVD commentary than a Let's Play or a walkthrough. Um, it's going to be more like 20 hours, I think. <laughs> 20 or 20, somewhere between 20 and 22, I believe. Um, you actually don't move anything on the controller after you create your character. First of all, let's get that out of the way. Uh, creating the character takes about... Uh, if you really want to customize it to like try to make it look like yourself, <laughs> uh, which I'm guessing a lot of people do, um, that can take upwards of an hour. <laughs> I know my brother, anytime there's a game where you create a character, uh, you might as well just go to bed. <laughs> um, especially if it's a create a wrestler game. Oh my gosh, we used to... Anytime a new one of those came out, we were playing that... And just, we, we wouldn't even go to the story mood. We would just go straight to create a character. And like six hours later, we would start a match. It was horrendous. Especially as time went on and uh, more options came in. Like create a create an entrance. I remember that was a huge deal for us. Um, WrestleMania 19's create an entrance is still one of the best. Uh, that's ever been done in a video game, in my opinion. Um, I mean, SmackDown vs. Raw 2011 had a pretty good one, too, but anyway, but that's besides the point. Uh, so, create character creation for the series. Uh, I'm going to get a drink right quick. <sighs> we'll take about <clears throat> maybe 10 minutes. Because uh, I'm going to just go probably default. Um, and then uh, then it's cutscenes for about 10 minutes. Another 10, 15 minutes. Uh, with some dialogue near the end. And then you get control of your character. But since it's on the Normandy, all you can do is talk. So you pretty much have... 30 to maybe 45 minutes of dialogue to start. <laughs> so that first episode may be an hour-long episode, depending on where I want to leave it at. Um, and it'll be the first episode of the huge project I have going, so we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, just, just imagine if you couldn't skip 
Like, go back and play Kingdom Hearts. Play Kingdom Hearts 2. Skip all the cutscenes, and then play Kingdom Hearts 1. And, uh, man. It's, uh, really frustrating. Especially when you get to the parts you don't like. So. Um. I'm now working on Dragon Age Origins. And. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, I found out that... It's actually quite easy to just do all the DLC, the, the in-campaign DLC first, and then go around and collect your allies in whatever order you want to. Um, so we'll probably go with that. Um, Dragon Age 2, I have a pretty, pretty good idea of how I'm going to run that, just because I've played it so many times. Um, so I pretty much got a optimum path set down, so that shouldn't take too long. So I would say to expect the first episode in January. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put that out right now. Um, notice I didn't say January 1st. I didn't say January 5th. I didn't say January 19th. Uh, could be January 31st, or, let's see, yeah, whatever, it could be the, it could be 1159 on the last day of January, so, uh, just be ready for that, <laughs> um, but I'm gonna try to record a bunch in advance and chop it up and all that and get it ready to start publish or editing and publishing and getting in guests to talk about it. Um, Slip being one of them. He enjoys a good Mass Effect. Um, hopefully <laughs> he will be up for that. Um, my good friend Pale Voyager. My pale friend. Hopefully he will be along for the ride on one of those episodes. Um, <laughs> if I can figure out how to fast forward. Like put footage and fast forward. Double speed, triple speed, whatever. Uh, then I can do, I can get closer to 100%ing uh, at least the Mass Effect series. I don't know. I don't think I want to try to 100% the Dragon Age games. But uh, we just lost Tally. And. Um, that's pretty much where I stopped caring <laughs> about this playthrough. <laughs> um, I lost Femship and I lost Tally. And, you know, that means Rex has to be the pilot. <laughs> so, yeah, take that as a cue for how the rest of the run goes. Um, My favorite mission in Mass Effect would have to be either the run on Ilos at the end of Mass Effect 1 or Lair the Shadow Broker. <laughs> the entire thing. Oh man. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of what I like the most on Mass Effect 3. I really love Mass Effect 3, but I can't really narrow down what I like about it so much. Um, besides the fact that I had so much fun playing it, and it was... I picked the perfect, absolutely perfect way to finish it for the way I played my... what I call Canon Shepard. Um, so... I don't know. I like the mission where you save the Turians on Tachanka. Um, I don't know. I just like, I really like running around the Citadel again. I really like doing that in the first game. And it was really disappointing when all the Citadel was in the second game was just three floors of shops. With barely anybody to talk to. So. Um, 
yeah, just running around the Citadel and just seeing how full of life and uh, and how just incredible it was. Um, especially, well, yeah, I'd say it's still too early for spoilers. Um, it hasn't been out. Any, it hasn't been out a year. That's my that's my rule with movies. I don't spoil uh, movies or TV shows unless it's been out for at least a year. So. So, uh, the little kid who sees ghosts, it was Bruce Willis. He was a ghost the whole time. I'm sorry, but you had to know. <laughs> that movie's been out over a decade now, I think, so. Um, yeah, it has to be, because Signs came out 2002, I think, 2003. It was in when my brother was still in high school, I think, so. Um, maybe it was 2004, but I don't know. It's definitely close to a decade ago. <laughs> um, I am not following doctor's orders on this, on this ship. <laughs> uh, that's referring to Dr. Hefe. Uh, he usually likes to jump from these things, especially if they have shields and especially if they have cloaks. Um, but <laughs> after losing Tally and Shep, I was just like, whatever, let's just see how far we can get fighting every single thing we can. And, uh, when I get closer to the end, um, I decided, well, maybe we should try to give it a fair share or a fair shake, I should say. So, uh, maybe my... <laughs> Maybe my positivity will pick up in the next episode. <laughs> um, I would really like to know if anybody else has picked up FTL after watching an FTL video, or if you just picked it up when you saw it on Steam. Because, to me, it seems like another one of those games that without YouTube... Uh, hardly anybody would have ever played it. Um, kind of like Minecraft. Minecraft probably would have just been a little free source indie type game. Instead, now it's a huge <laughs> juggernaut of creativity and uh, spontaneity. So, uh, th all thanks to YouTube. <laughs> I'm sure Notch would be the first person to tell anyone that YouTube saved his game and it, why and the money in his bed sheets is all from YouTube. <laughs> uh, well maybe not but certainly it's a big a big portion of those sales <laughs> is paid for by people who saw it on YouTube first. I know that's where I came from. Um, well, I, I can get into where I got into Minecraft in the Minecraft series, but the way I got into FTL was DocM77. He started doing runs for it, and uh, it just seemed like such a cool idea to me, being able to pilot your own starship and choose where your crew goes and what they do, and um, being able to run away from fights in a, in a starship fighting game. I've never, I'd never seen that before. I'm sure Eve Online does it, but Eve Online is so complicated to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been looking uh, really hard into Steam for more games to pick up. Just light stuff that I can do every once in a while, kind of like this, um, kind of like FTL, kind of like Minecraft, kind of like. Uh, the the Hunt for Gems series. Stuff I can just pick up and do uh, a couple episodes of and get ready to post in between recording and editing the Bioware series. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. Uh, probably not going to buy anything like Civ Five, uh, mostly because it's way overpriced <laughs> for what it is, in my opinion. But also because... Uh, that would be a game that that's all I would ever do for the rest of my life if I picked it up. <laughs> or 
or at least for a large span of time. So, um, probably not going to do a video series of it because I would never want to stop recording or stop the game long enough to stop recording. So, probably won't do any of those. I probably wouldn't mind doing a Sims house or a Sim City kind of thing. Uh, but Civ 5 is so much more <laughs> complicated and uh, intense, I should say. Not really complicated if you know how to play those games, but we almost lost another crew member there, <laughs> our resident Asari. Uh, it seems we picked up another Mantis. That's always good. Um, let's see. I have a Steam wish list. <laughs> if if you want to look that up, um, I. I'm trying to remember what all is on there. I think Walking Dead is on there. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is on there because it's the only Bioware series I've never... That and Jade Empire are the only series I've never played from Bioware, so that would be an interesting experience. Um, what else? There's another spacefaring kind of game like this that seemed a little bit more involved. I can't remember what it's called. It's kind of like the step up from this on its way to EVE Online. But maybe I'll think about it between episodes. So, POD7 signing out here.